Hi everyone, welcome back to another tabletop video. Uh, today I've got a new device for you. It is the Sonoff 4 Channel Pro. Okay. Uh, the word Sonoff feels, feels familiar to some of you. Could be from this device, which I've previously shown. Um, they do a whole range of uh, Wi Fi enabled, voice controllable devices. Uh, but this is a, a much bigger model and it has four outputs. The difference with this model, as this, although it's actually originally, I guess, made by Sonoff, it's been customized by RD Technique, so it has a Kasambi module inside it. And they've renamed it the Home Assistant Interface. This one's kindly been loaned to me by Kasambi Enabled Products, uh, Tom and his wife in the Netherlands. So again, this just uh, connects via Wi-Fi and it's also voice enabled as well. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that later on. So in this particular video, previously I'd set up the this Sonoff device with uh, an Amazon Echo. This time we're gonna set up the Sonoff device with uh, a Google Home, I believe they're called. So getting onto this device, you can see I'm using uh, <clears throat> 230 volts to power it right now, AC but it can be powered from a DC adapter as well. Okay, so it takes both. It has four, I don't want to call them outputs because they aren't actually outputs. Okay. They're actually switchable contacts. So they don't provide any power output at all. At all. Um, this son of device does provide power output, okay? So for those of you that remember what happened here in this previous video, um, we were using smart switching. So this the Sonoff device is purely send, turning this uh, A2D on and off. We were then taking advantage of the smart switching function to, to either turn on a scene or control a group, etc. So like I said, these do not offer power output. You're just switchable, they're switchable contacts. The difference is you can actually configure these contacts uh, or not the contact, sorry, but the the switchings in the Xambi app. And I'll place an image of that here right now on the left. So you can see that I've already pre-configured uh, all four to various devices. What you need to remember with this particular device is when it's in its factory state, it's not yet compatible with Xambi. You need to change what uh, Sonoff refer to as the inching option, okay? And what that does is rather than latching these contacts on or off or open or closed, however you prefer to say it, it simply puts them on as a pulse for anything, I believe it's from half a second until a number of seconds. I've reduced this, the latching option so that it's only for half a second at a time. So if I manually really start it, you'll hear it just click on and off. That's it. And of course, because I've got something configured above, it turned the lights on. So let's turn them back off. So you saw the red light temporarily come on there for channel number one. So it's essentially working in exactly the same way as a push button does in the Kasambi system. So whatever you can, or however you can configure a push button can be done the same way with this device. First, just add this on-off device to the app as you would any other Sonoff device and then select the device and the dotted menu in the top right hand corner and scroll down and then choose inching settings. You'll see that they're all initially disabled. So you want to enable all channels, all four channels and then change it from the default one second to 0 0.5 seconds. And the reason for this is a one second is actually too long for the Xambi system. At that point, a push button which is held down for a second will be interpreted as a, a dimming signal. Then once you've done all four, just save. And that's it, you're done with the EWE link side of things. So to get the Sonoff device into your Google Home, you first need to enable the WE link services. So just choose settings, Add device and choose works with Google. And in the search bar at the top there, 
just search for we and then the one you want is e we link smart home and just select link to enable it you see it's now linked Okay, and it's now offering offering you the four uh, devices. Plus, it actually offers you one extra switch, which turns on all four channels at the same time. I chose not to use them though, but you can if you want to. So you can only enable one plug at a time or one outlet at a time. So just select the outlet and choose next. Then add it to a home. We just use here, I'm just using the default home. You can choose where the device is going to be. So for this example, I chose dining room. So I've now added a second device to my dining room. Now a third device has been added to the kitchen. And now a fourth device has been added to the kitchen. So I've added two of them to the dining room and two of them to the kitchen. The four channel pro R3 plug that I've left there is the, the option that turns all four channels on or off at the same time, but I didn't use that. So you can see that I've now got two assigned with dining room and two outlets assigned with kitchen. Here I'm going to change the device name so it's not 4 Channel Pro R3, it's just simply outlet 1. Whatever you select that name as is what you will have to call it when you talk to the, the Google Home. And again, just changing or renaming the outlet two correctly or making it a bit simpler. Same thing for outlet three and outlet four. So that's it. That's actually now the Google Home integration done as well. Okay, so now that we've got everything configured, let's give it a go. As you can see, I configured these particular contacts uh, in the Google Home as outlets. So we're going to refer to the one I've configured as outlet one. Because it's a push button, you're technically not turning it on or off. It's just being activated, okay? So um, rather than say, um, turn out letter one on or off, I'm just gonna say activate, and that seems to work fine. So you'll see when I turn the lights on that the, it'll highlight this, uh, this area here. Hey Google, activate outlet one. Okay, turning on the outlet one. And that's it, you saw the red light flash pretty quickly and you can see that the lights now are shining on uh, shining on the unit itself so to turn it off hey Google activate outlet one all right turning the outlet one on and then the lights went off again and a slightly different view from here hey Google activate outlet one Hey Google, activate outlet one. Okay, turning on the outlet one. 
So as you can see, just using the word activate is how to do it. I'll show you an example that does not work, okay? Hey Google, turn outlet one on. So that's worked okay, but let's see what happens now when I say I use the command off instead. Hey Google, outlet one off. Got it, turning off the outlet one. So as you can see, or as you can see, or maybe can't see, it actually did its job uh, from the unit, but it kind of doesn't activate very well. So it would. We'll use again. We'll use the activate command. Hey Google, activate outlet one. Sure, turning the outlet one on. So that's the way to do it. With the Google Home, use the word activate rather than on or off, because that's essentially what you're doing with a push button anyway.